from coming. There was nobody who could tell, like, do the right thing. Nobody. Nobody. And at 16, I was five foot five, her mama was five foot two. And sister had gone to college, her brother had gone to college. And little Thuggy was still home, fighting every day in the street. And mother said, that was my brother. I said, hey, I can take you. And it wasn't because I hadn't grown up in church. And it wasn't because I didn't have respect for my nana who was 40 miles away. It was because my mother, in her fear, and there were many. She didn't want nobody abusing us, sexually or otherwise. You know, she tried to raise this kid. My mother kept such tight control that I was in a prison. And I spent every day trying to break up. I went to all white schools, and I was very bright. I was the blackest thing in the school. You see, like as you think I am, I was the blackest thing in the school. Me and this Chinese girl is a little one. And I fought every day white people in Boston, Massachusetts. In 1977, Boston, Massachusetts was still using in the black school one little nigga, two little niggas, three little niggas, four. Still using those four. That's how the faces the North is. I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about anything black. I knew Barry Anderson and Roman A. And Joe Lewis, who I thought I was. <laughs> But I fought my way out. I got in as much trouble as any young girl would get into. My sister was middle class and healthy. My brother was proper as hell in the paratroopers, and I chose the other way. <laughs> it is not what people say. It is not drugs. It is not poor education. It is that we have not created the social fabric that makes our children see how precious they are. We have not put in the age grade realities that our ancestors had that when you get to be 25, this happens. When you get to be 35, this happens. We sisters want father love. We don't want Prince Charlie's love. That only lasts at best three minutes. <laughs> and that's if he's a frog, it turns into Prince Charlie. <laughs> Most of them just stay frogs. <laughs> <laughs> we want these wise men, wise as John Henry Clark, brave as Malcolm, and as spiritual as Martin Luther King. At 19, because we haven't had that. Because we haven't recreated in the black community a social fabric where we use the genius of our men. So they try to stay young because we keep saying that old fool. We have thrown away our men. We're talking about throwing away our young men. We don't give young men anything to look forward to becoming old folk. Right. I mean, everybody can't be John Clark. And if the black community doesn't begin to develop a style where the men are respected as much as the women, not just wanted for whatever you want, economically, physically, or because you need somebody to bring the dollars or proceeds in, but the essential quality of a man, he's got to be affirmed. We do nothing in this society to affirm our men. I'm sorry, sister. I'm sorry. Women put the cultural values in a community. And we have to begin to look at that. 650,000 young men between the ages of 18 and 45 are in prison. 98 
percent of the ones in New York City jail are black. This is not an accident. And it's not just about education, because I give lectures in there, they're bright as that. We are not giving them anything to come out for. So we can have all these, and we can talk about all that the black man has done. But we have to look at what he took away from us. Not just the pyramids. It ain't even important about the pyramids. Not the hundred million people that went into the ocean. When we look at the hundred million people that went into the ocean, we need to look at people that became disconnected from their generation to generation to generation. We have young people who don't know anybody over 50, 40. You know, old people, we shut over in the old house. We need to develop some. So I, what I did, and I brought this to show you. This is one model that my partner and I created. It's called Culture-Centered Multi-Level Learning Oral History. <laughs> Look, what blanking. But what we did was we took some of these kids in college, the city and at my college, that weren't doing well with their skills. And we took them down to a senior citizen center that I'm going to join next week because I'm 62. And, but I'm on the board right now. And we had them interview, we bought them paper corners, and we had them interview these old people. We gave them a set of questions, but they had to memorize them, because you know, old people don't like to read them no questions. Right? The people in this project were Sammy Davis Jr.'s mother, my mother, old cotton club women, hustlers and stuff. And these 20, 21 year old kids on my campus in City College had never talked to 80 or 90 year olds. They were shocked at how much information they and then they would type it up on a computer, I put them on a computer so they learn word processing. Then they would type it up and go back to the people, and of course, you know, old people that say, I didn't say that. <laughs> and then they would come back and say, well, they said they didn't say this. And I said, well, then just correct it to you and they agree. Mm. And this went on for a semester. We were only going to have them type it up, but we got lucky and found a guy who knew, work, knew the desktop publishing. He taught us how to do this. Each kid did his own. And then we put some poems and made a little magazine, took the back of them, gave them a part. Now what happened is that they learned their culture. They learned their history. They improved their writing. They wrote with no errors, because these old people were going to tell them about it. And they developed a connectedness. And that's what I'm talking about. We need, there's a plan right now called America 2000. There's an ad in the New York Times right now, James and you all, that you can put in if you have four or five hundred people and get some of your educators and you can put in a proposal from grades nine to twelve and develop a vision school. You can do this. You can do this. You know, you need more than a building. You need to give some money for the building. You need to own your own building. And you need to bring some people in here, and you need to start age grades. Socialization, rites of past, ritual, you know, lectures are nice, and they're fun, and I enjoy doing it. But we really have to move to the next level. If we don't do it this year, we're going to miss it, because we're going to lose the energy. We really need to develop the community that we had when we came here that they just lost. The African way. We really need to get up to my people.
Well, no, because that's my book, and I haven't written it yet, but... <laughs> so, hi, 